Once upon a time, like Cinderella and many of the characters in their folktales, the story of Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm is, rags to is a rags-to-riches one. The brothers were born one year apart in Hanau in the Holy Roman Empire state of Hesse-Cassel in present-day Germany near Frankfurt. In 1796, just a few days after Jacob, the eldest, turned 11, their father died suddenly of pneumonia, plunging the once-middle-class family of six children into poverty. Two years later, Jacob and Wilhelm left home to attend high school in Cassell, a privilege made possible by their aunt's financial support. The inseparable pair shared the same diligent work habits, studying for up to 12 hours a day. After graduating, Jacob moved to Marburg in 1802 to study law at the university. Wilhelm followed a year later. Most of the students from wealthier families received a tuition stipend, but the Grimm's drastic change in financial circumstance and thus social status meant they had to pay for their own education. But this setback later proved fortuitous. As Jacob later wrote in his autobiography, sparseness spurns a person to industriousness and work. The pair had entered the university intending to echo their father's career in law and civil service, but identifying with the hardworking folk whose language and stories they would later preserve and publish, they instead discovered a vocation that would define their lives and legacy. Finding folktales. Friedrich Karl von Savigny, a professor at the University of Marburg, sparked Jacob and Wilhelm's interest in German history and literature and a new field of philology the study of language and historical texts. Savigny introduced the brothers to his scholarly circle of Clemens Brentano and Achim von Arnim, German writers influenced by Johann Gottfried von Herder, a philosopher who called for a rediscovery and preservation of Volksposi, the people's poetry. In 1805, Jacob worked as Savigny's assistant in Paris, collecting documents in German customs, law, and literature. Jacob and Wilhelm were prolific letter writers during their rare times apart, and while in Paris, Jacob wrote to Wilhelm in Marburg of his desire to devote his life to the study of German literary history. Arnhem and Brentano had published a collection of old German folk songs, and Brentano, wanting to continue his philological pursuits, asked the Grimms for their help in combing library shelves for folktales. The brothers found some texts in books, but they also focused on oral traditions, seeking out storytellers in friends and acquaintances. Most of them were women, one of whom, Dorothy Wilde, would later marry Wilhelm. The person who contributed the most to the Grimm's collection was Dorothy Pearson Weichmann, whose father owned a popular inn near Cassell. She shared the many tales that travelers had told her. A happy ending. Brittano did not use the 54 tales that Jacob and Wilhelm sent him in 1810, but Arnhem urged them to publish their collection nonetheless. Published in 1812, Children's and Household Tales was not an immediate success. Even so, the brothers' subsequent publications of philological research, two volumes of German legends and one of early German literary history, among others, cemented their reputation as innovative scholars in the field. Over a 40-year span, seven editions of the Folk Tale Collection were published. The final edition, published in 1857, is the best known and is notably different from the first in both style and content. The brothers asserted that they collected the stories with exactness and truth without embellishment or details of their own. In a later edition, Wilhelm expanded the originally shorter, sparser prose and modified plots to make parts of the dark, tragic stories more accessible to children. Beginning in 1815, illustrations were added to the books. The stories in the first edition are thus more faithful to the oral tradition than those in the last, which, together with Wilhelm's adaptations, offered a more literary approach. The Grimm's had not intended to publish a book of folktales. They wanted to resurrect the German oral tradition, but in the process, they ultimately curated a culturally encompassing collection of tales. Though the brothers became a household name because of it, children's and household tales was part of a bigger pursuit to excavate and preserve the oral and written forms of German culture to restore this treasure to the people. 
As philologists, collectors, researchers, and editors, the brothers helped establish the methodology of collecting and documenting folklore. Their pioneering scientific approach changed the course of historical linguistics, setting a standard worthy of imitation. So that's the article, but I'm going to postulate this. Would you call the Grimm brothers the first sellouts? Seriously. I mean, instead of preserving what they set out to preserve originally in their earlier works, they modified and changed the darker details to make it more commercial. I mean, is, isn't that the definition of selling out? <laughs> selling out or making sure information can be spread as far and wide as possible. I mean, I, they, they were already looked at as scholars. I mean, they already, that they, it's not like they didn't have a printing press. True, but I mean, to be with scholars, and they might have felt, let's say, you really found this as very important information, but important so much so that, again, that you know that a good portion of targets are children. You can't really tell a child, you know, that level of intense information. But the story, a little bit more accessible, a bit more easier for them to understand, really acknowledge. Well, then they, they should have made a separate edition, like a four kids version, instead of perverting the actual work, right? Because that, that way they could have two editions without, because this makes it look like they sold out, because they could have just made a four kids version clearly designated, clearly marked for kids, and still have the original. Very much so true. But they still does exist. Back in the early 1800s, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm were working as librarians. Born into a well-off family, their lives took a turn for the worse when their father died and the brothers struggled through school and university in poverty. Librarians weren't particularly well paid either, but the Grimms were both keen scholars, and their work gave them both time and opportunity for their own research that let them put together a collection of folk tales. It sounds like a kind of whimsical project, but the Grimm's work was actually part of a wider political movement in Germany at the time. The country was split into 200 principalities, and many people, including the Grimm's law professor, Friedrich von Savigny, wanted to see them united as a single nation. To that end, many writers and thinkers were turning to traditional folk tales to explore, or maybe define, a kind of German national identity. The theory was that these stories passed down from one generation to the next contained the collective hopes, fears, and morals of the German people. The Grimm's weren't the only ones putting together collections of folklore, but it's their work that became the best known. Their first volumes of stories, Kinder und Hausmarschen, or Children's in the Household Tales, contained 86 stories gathered together from the Grimm's research and from their friends and acquaintances. The Grimm's included stories commonly told in other regions of the world if they thought they had German roots somewhere along the line, including rewritten versions of stories thought to be original to French author Charles Perrault. And all the stories were edited both so that they used Germanic words and phrases and so they sounded authentically rustic. It's hard to know now how cynically that might have been done, so maybe it's best to give the Grimm's the benefit of the doubt and assume they thought they were doing what they thought was best. One thing they definitely were doing, though, was making sure to include all the gory details of the more didactic stories in their collection. You've probably heard that most fairy tales were much nastier in their original forms than they are in the later Disney-fied versions, but it's still striking just how much darker they were. 